In this tutorial, we are going to discuss the OAS HMI Wizard. The URL for the OAS HMI Wizard is www.opcweb.com wizard. There are two basic methods for using the OAS Web HMI product. The first is the programmatic method. With this method, you include the script libraries and you write your own JavaScript to read and write data and to manipulate the user interface. This is best suited for people who are comfortable with JavaScript development and or people who desire more in-depth control of how and when things are displayed and need the ability to manipulate the data as it comes from the server. The second method is the Web HMI Code Wizard. It uses the same script libraries as the programmatic method. It provides a set of attributes that can be applied to HTML elements to exhibit different behaviors that are tied to live tag data coming from the OAS service. It is geared for users that are less experienced with JavaScript. It is also possible to use a combination of both methods. I like to begin by explaining what the HMI code wizard is and what it is not. The Web HMI product is a set of libraries for web developers to use to view and manipulate tag data via a web browser. It is based in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, so it is platform independent as long as you have the capability to include some script libraries in your application or on your web page. It is a tool for web developers to make Web HMI easier. What it is not is a drag and drop interface. In order to build anything of stuff substance with it, you will need to have some basic web development skills. Let's take a closer look at the code wizard. At the top right hand side of the screen, there is an input field for the OIS server you would like to communicate with. By default, it is set to opcweb.com with the port 58725 specified. However, you can point this to anywhere you have an OAS server set up. I'm going to change this right now to localhost and point it to the OAS service I have running on my machine. Please note, localhost would not work if I were not also browsing this page from my local machine. For that to work, I would also have to have my local machine tied to a publicly accessible IP or domain name. The port number specified after the URL is the port number you have OAS Web HMI configured to run on. You can set this or change this in the OAS configuration tool under Configure, Options, and then go to the Networking tab. The port number is specified under the REST API and Web Port Number dialog box. You can change this to anything you'd like as long as it is, op as it is open for communication. If you have an SSL certificate on your site and want OAS to communicate through SSL, you would need to have the certificate installed on the machine OAS is installed on. Then you would check this box here and use the drop down here to select the certificate. OAS will recognize that you have it installed and it will appear in the box for you to select. It is always best to configure SSL to run on a separate port so please configure a different port for it to use. Below that on the screen is the base HTML element selector. We have the basic ones here to choose from, div, input, button, and image. Selecting one of them here makes the element appear in the live demo window below. This will be the element we will apply attributes and behaviors to based on the OAS tag we specify. You can see that the actual HTML appears in the HTML element window as well. These are, not o these are not the only HTML elements that you can apply attributes to. They are just the typical ones. You can use any HTML element that exists, such as an A tag or a label. Next, we have the HTML element window. As we make changes to the attributes on the page, you will see the code in this window changes here to reflect what we do. You can copy and paste the code from this window into your own HTML page or application to use the elements that you create. By doing that, you can element by element build up a rich interface. 
Next to the HTML element tab, you will see another tab that says full page source. Let's switch over to that and take a closer look at the full page. You can see we have a very basic HTML page here. It has the standard tags, doc type, HTML, head, title, and body. Next, for the OAS Web HMI to run, you will need to include a few other simple things on your page. First, you will need a reference to the jQuery library. jQuery is a common JavaScript library that a lot of web applications use. You can use any jQuery library greater than 1.8.3. If you are using the latest version for some other functionality in your application, that will work just as well. Next, you will need a reference to the OAS script library, which is OPC lib min. This script library is the core of all of the OAS web products, web HMI, web alarm, and web trend. It handles all of the communication with the OAS service and the changing of elements on the screen so that you don't have to do any of that work. These libraries are included with the distribution of our software. The next thing you see is the script block here, which contains the page configuration. This tells the page how we are going to communicate with the OAS server. The first thing in it is a security token. This represents the session for Web HMI. If you plan to set up security in your application, you wouldn't include this token. In its place, you would have an authentication routine that would create a token based on the user credentials. You can learn more about that in the security section of our knowledge base. There is also example source code for creating web security with .NET and JavaScript in the knowledge base under other resources, examples, web and REST API. For our purposes, we will just hard code it. This is the server URL. Again, please note that it is not the web server URL, but the OAS server where the data is coming from. Below the configuration block, you will see there is a reference to an external style sheet. This is not required, but it also shows that you can have your own style sheet or whatever you need for your application. I'm going to switch back to the HTML element view now. Below that, there are some examples set up to point to the demo tags that ship with our product. I like to point out that the HTML code wizard is an excellent way to see if you have web HMI set up correctly, that you have the server set up and running, and that the URL is pointed to the correct place, and that your license is installed correctly. You can tell everything is set up correctly because you, you can see the sign, pump, and saw values are all coming in and changing to reflect what is in my OAS service on my local host. I will bring up the configuration tool and we can see that the sign tag is changing along with what is on the screen. Depending on where the service is that you are pointed to and what the polling rate is set at, you may see a delay between the two. The polling rate by default is set to one second, but that is also something that can be configured. If I were to have a bad connection, I can demonstrate that by making this URL incorrect. You would see that the data would stop updating on the screen. Finally, on the bottom of the right side, we have the live demo window, which displays the output of the coding we do on the rest of the page. Let's switch over here and look at the left side of the page. The left side contains the HTML attribute list. It is a list of configurable HTML parameters that can be applied to the element that we select on the right side. If you expand one of them, it will add that attribute to the markup. Closing it removes it. Here you see a link for the full attribute reference. It links to our knowledge base and goes over each attribute in detail. It is a great resource for developers working with the wizard. So let's start with the first one, the OPC tag text. This sets the text attribute for the base element. As you can see, when I open it, it adds that attribute to the div that I have selected here. When I close it, it removes it. The only value you need to have for this one is the tag. This is the name of the tag you want to display from your configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and type sign.value in here. Please note that this is case sensitive. 
You can see as I enter it, the sign value starts to show up in our demo window. You can also see in the HTML element window that the markup has changed. The attributes are sent to the OAS server in JSON format. JSON data is written as name value pairs. So tag is the name and sign.value is the value. Now I have requested the value of the sign tag, and that is most often what you will be looking for. However, there are hundreds of properties associated with each tag, and you can use any of them. For example, if instead of sign.value, I entered sign.highhighalarm value, it would display the value that is set for high high alarm for this tag. I will just make this sign.value for now. Under the tag property is an attribute called bad underscore Q, which represents the data quality for the tag. It lets you change what will be displayed if the tag was not receiving good data. Maybe the connection is down or the tag is formatted incorrectly. Currently, the field is empty, so if the data quality was bad, it would display nothing. Let's go ahead and change that to question mark, question mark, question mark. Now, if I change the sign dot value to sign h dot value, which is incorrect, you can see those question marks appear. This way we know that the data coming in is inaccurate. You could put anything in there, not just question marks. Let's go ahead and put that back. Under that, we have string. This formats the value as a string in the way that we specify. So I will go ahead and enter my sign value is curly bracket zero curly bracket. The curly bracket surrounding the zero is replaced by the sign value. Down here, we can format the float value. Our sign value is a double float, so this will work with this tag. So in here, if I enter 0.00, .00 you can see that it's now rounding the value by two decimal places. Let's clear all of this out now and take a look at a Boolean value. I will use our pump tag and enter pump.value. You can see that it is coming up on the screen as false which is correct, but false doesn't mean much to the user. So here we can format what we want it to say for Boolean tags. If I put the pump is off, and here I will put the pump is on. Next, I will go down to the OPC tag FG, which is the foreground or text color for this element. Let's expand it, and for the tag I will put pump.value, and then I will enter a hex code for green for its true or on state. Then I will enter a hex value for red for its false or off value. Now, if we pull up our web HMI wizard and our OAS configuration app at the same time, we can watch what happens if we set the tag to true. We can see that the text turns green and it now says the pump is on. If I set it back to false, it is again red and says the pump is off. This is definitely much more meaningful to the user. I have shown you just some very simple examples of what we can do with the HMI wizard. You can actually build a very advanced visual interface with it, especially if you use images. Before we go, let's take a look at some of the other attributes that are available to configure. We have already gone over OPC tag text. Below that is OPC tag set, which allows you to write back to OIS and then to your PLC. This is good for buttons. Next is OPC tag value, which is good for setting form values such as input fields. Next is background, which sets the co background color of an element. You can also set background images with it. We've done OPC tag foreground, and below that is border style and source. And under that, we have tooltip and enables, which allows you to disable an element or enable it based on a tag value. Under that is visibility. With this, you can show or hide an element based on a tag value. And then there's opacity, width, height, 
And there's several more below that. Again, you can see the full attribute reference list in our knowledge base by clicking this link here. For more information on open automation software, please visit our website at www.openautomationsoftware.com.